Hey everybody, welcome back to Sex, Drugs, and the Epigenome. I'm back again with Dr. Seeds. And Doc, I'm excited. I'm excited not, not just for our topic today, but that I'm going to see you again next week. I can't you tell how excited I am. <laughs> in your element. In my like, element. In, in, in your heaven. In your heaven, that would be on a mountain with some skis attached to the feet, going 100 miles an hour. It's always a good thing if you can... <laughs> If we can mix work into that scenario, which I seem to do really well, um, that's what it's all about, right? We figured you have figured it out. That this is this is where you wanted to go. Um, so we will be uh, broadcasting from Bail next week, but this week we've got some fun things planned. Um, this topic is a long time coming. Uh, over the course of I think about six months. We've received so many one-off questions about hormones, and it's such a misunderstood, oftentimes um, even completely wrong, like the opposite is true, uh, regarding the whole topic of hormones, not just for men, but also for women, and, and of course, the things that overlap. Um, and so this episode is more of an informational uh, myth buster type of episode on your hormones at any age. We're gonna to try to mention the age age and the various um, age groups that we're referring to, but, um, and if we don't, please let us know so that we can clarify that for you. As usual, folks, our lawyers like to, like to stay happy, like to keep us on our toes by letting you know our medical disclaimer. And that is, this is not um, intended as a diagnosis. Please always consult with your own medical professionals about your own healthcare. This is for educational pur purposes only now that that stuff is out of the way dr seeds on hormones i want to start with a very common myth um and this is starting at the younger age group i want to say like under 25 they're too young to worry about hormones and this is a, a common uh, misconception and doc i'd love to kind of hear your take on that well so that is a yeah um i i think more of that right now is in the cult in the culture of the physical culture of trying to improve muscle mass and um along those lines of where uh, the younger adults feel that they need more production of testosterone to to enhance uh muscular development and hypertrophy of muscle um or enhanced athletic performance and and it definitely is an issue um that that where younger people need to really understand that um, when they're typically in a they're in a phase of where they are producing their they're at their highest level typically um you know just after just after puberty to the mid twenties or so, they're they're in their area of where they're producing their highest levels of of hormones that they will during their lifetime. Um, that including growth hormone um, and and testosterone for males. It's kind of where they're optimized, and and the um, the the premise there is um, is they want to optimize it further and unfortunately don't realize some of the downsides that they can encounter uh, by doing that you inhibit you turn on inhibitory mechanisms of where you're going to turn off the the production of their own natural uh, testosterone and can cause issues with their testicles and infertility issues and um other issues, uh, cholesterol issues, and insulin resistance issues, depending on the time frame and and how they, uh, you know, how how they structure that. And and there's sophisticated methods of where you know, uh, where um, they they try to compensate with it by trying to cycle these thing these type of androgens, um, and these androgens, you know, they can lead to more to increased hair loss and 
um, increased acne, um, and mood disturbances also. And um, the, the issue of this cycling and going on and off, uh, in, in some respects, they feel that they can dodge the bullet and, and, and get the benefits of um, the muscle development and then kind of coast for a while and repeat. And, and I think that's, I think that's kind of a mistake um, early on. And, and, and unfortunately, you know, I see that now in older level athletes or uh, people who trained to those degrees and, and now regret, very much regret a lot of that type of um, activity because of what it's done, the toll it's taken on them later on in life. Um, and those are, those are some, those are some significant, uh, um, um, self, uh, introspection type of stories that are really valuable. And maybe we can get a couple of those people on to talk about things like that in real life. And, and, and hopefully maybe some people that a lot of people know, and that would be really, I think, tremendous. You're starting to see some of that on YouTube, some people talking about things like that. Because the benefits there of, you know, when you're younger and training, it comes down more to, you know, what's really anabolic when you're training, it's the amount of nutrition you're putting in your body. So, so actually, the, the, the nutrition for these athletes can be significant motive, significant influencers in further muscle development, and further um, uh, improvement uh, in hypertrophy, if that's what they're looking for, um, they're, or in working on uh, uh, improving training, uh, depending on the diet, and, and increasing the amount of calories and protein versus carbohydrates and when and nutrient timing and all the things we discuss, I think can be instrumental in, in optimizing that development and um, in working with um, uh, helping these these athletes uh, put on muscle mass, which they're very capable of doing, um, because it's all related to the nutrient input, and that makes a that makes a big difference. Um, and there are ways, uh, you know, there with there are ways to improve. Uh, it's all about. It comes down to the amount of of. It comes down to really glucose absorption into muscle. And we've talked a little bit about enhancing, enhancing that post-workout in some of our other um, informational videos, uh, our training videos, uh, with uh, with uh, protein intake post um, post-workout, but also including ketones to control insulin, so that you can improve the amount of glucose over time that the muscle will absorb. So there are a lot of there are really a lot of great training tools out there that you can take advantage of and do, I think, very well in optimizing the body. Um, and there are certainly uh, peptides out there, oral peptides like L-carnosine that improve, uh, that help in improving um, uh, glucose uptake in muscle uh, that can also be significant in, um, in helping uh, people train uh, uh, athletic, it, it, train to improve um, issues like what we're just discussing. So uh, there are good ways to do this. And certainly we don't have the time to talk about that here, but to bring up and hit all these topics, there's lots of avenues in working on, um, on things like that with, you know, with the, with the topic uh, that, that you just brought up. Uh Two follow-up questions to that came to mind, Doc. So are you saying that taking hormones like testosterone early on, it can cause some serious epigenetic changes, like almost what it changes to the DNA because it affects them so late in life? Well, it just causes cell efficiency issues that cause inflammatory issues that cause um, downregulation of other genes um, it just turns on mTOR too long, mm -hmm. so it can feed senescent problems. It, there's a lot of issues depending on, again, the health of the person when they're doing it. Um, but 
over time, unfortunately, over time, it takes its toll in, in making, um, b- because you're, you're forcing again the cell to lose its flexibility in the way it's going to choose its substrate. Um, basically, testosterone is, is uh, it, it works with an androgen receptor and then goes through processes of where it gets into the, the, the nucleus to make a lot of transcription changes that lead to translation changes and more protein synthesis and, and more mTOR, meaning building, growing, growth. And you just can't have it going on all the time. It's like a, it's just not, it's kind of the balance of where you need catabolic and anabolic states to keep a cell efficient. And you're gonna, you know, you, you can't, you, you can't get by that. And uh, unfortunately, that's what catches up to people. And it catch, it's why, it's what leads to um, injury. Um, you know, it, 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 it potentiates this myth of that you can just overtrain all the time. And actually you end up making your, some of the, the aspects of your tendon insertions into bone, you make those weaker over time. Um, and again, it has to do with the cell and what we're talking about efficiencies and in, in nutrition and so forth. But you, you end up because you, lose the control of recovery and you change the um, aspects of the cell, um, you end up hurting yourself and you're more prone to muscle tears and tendon strains um, and ligamentous sprains um, and, uh, and tears. And that has to do with issues with collagen and, um, and how that you you lose that some of the strength that goes along with that, um, and it's and the ability to repair and re, and recover. So overdoing it, so too much. Of, here's an example of too much of something can be an issue and and can work against you. Now, in the short run, it could be you know you can see some incredible results, and you unfortunately that's the part you see. You don't see all the bad things because people aren't up there promoting all the bad things that happen. But yet that's what I see um, as a physician. I, I see, unfortunately, those issues and what they've done in uh, over the long term. I love that. And you almost offered an alternative um, earlier. You were saying that um, it, you should instead be I hate to simplify it to this extent, but instead of thinking about getting bigger and bulkier and stronger, maybe you want to think about getting a better glucose glucose energy source. It, is that a good kind of alternative solution to this? So it's a, it's, I made it sound simple. It's, it's just, it's a little more complicated. It's, of course it's, it is. <laughs> it's, it's more, um, the in younger people, you already are optimized with your hormones to, for the most part, and it's just more about nutrient timing and when, and and in your training and how you can take advantage of that, because everything's working so well and because you can control glucose and insulin better, if you understand those those aspects of um, of how that works, you can take advantage of your training and and get tremendous benefits um, of, and there are, there are plenty of athletes out there that are, that train clean with nutrition and, and, and are, and are all, and are accused of all oh, these guys, this guy's taking steroids and, and they're not. It's because they're taking advantage of their physiology and understanding what they can do with their nutrients. And, um, and sometimes when you're doing uh, anabolics or androgen type of replacements, you don't, you're not as concentrated. You're just trying to put in a lot of bulk of, of uh, substrate of food um, and not really concentrating on the type of food. You're just putting in a lot of food because the, the excess of the androgen can kind of work in your favor in the short run again, where it can still shed, shred the fat 
lipolysis and still build muscle despite the the bad maybe the you know the pizzas and all the things you keep throwing in there instead of being clean with your uh, with your nutrients with your proteins and carbs and fatty acids and ketones and so forth so um well it, put doc well put and this is the, I, i'm only slightly familiar with this because of uh that that extreme two-day course that you taught on athlete op body optimization and injury repair. Uh, and, and so folks, if you're interested in that, it's uh, email us, we'll, we'll send you that, that link so that you can check it out. Uh, but it is a mind boggling course. Some of the things that you went over, um, just to, to, and being so exact, like exactly what you said, taking advantage of that physiology uh, without any, without any, I don't know, any, you know, unnatural, unnatural drugs that throw you out of, throw you out of whack. Um, well, that's it, super cool. Yeah. And it's, you know, the, well, I think this is what's going to play into, you know, we've got a couple things coming up. We've got our, we're doing our primer hormone course, which I think is going to be tremendous. And, and this is just kind of an indicator of why we need to do it. And then our master's hormone course, where we have, you know, we have the best, we have the best people in the world um, that have written all the books on estrogen and testosterone, uh, you know, Uzi Rice and, uh, and Erica Schwartz. And, you know, we've, we've got the East Coast, West Coast representation of <laughs> what's coming. And it's going to be that and, and Betsy and uh, uh, Suzanne and, and the, you know, the team. I mean, you've got a lot of people out there that are very, very experienced in this, where we're going to bring that master course together and we're just going to kind of tee it up you know with the primer of of just understanding the basics of hormones but understanding that there's a long way you can go before you even need to get to those phases and then it's up to you and your physician to kind of decide how you go at it or i think the more knowledge you have though in understanding these issues of growth hormone and testosterone and estrogen and progesterone um, those basics are really, really important. Uh, and, and the aspect of understanding that cell efficiency is all about your ability to effectively produce your testosterone and your, your estrogen. And, you know, it's, it's how the ovary functions and it's how the testes function and the adrenal gland to some degree too, and how the pituitary works in putting all of that together. So it's kind of like, well, the master hormone growth hormone and its effects it has on everything. And I think that's gonna be, you know, it's kind of what we alluded to in the primer also of the peptide fundamentals and in the, in the peptide um, early course we did that, that's, on, um, that's online. And this is just kind of that, it's, it's, it's another step in putting more of this together for everybody to just have a great platform to start from. And so then when we have the masters, you know, like Uzi and Erica out there, you know, showing their swag with what they're so good at, um, it's gonna be awesome. So we're really, really excited about that. Um, Cause no, the, the, you know, you're, you're talking about a tremendous amount of experience um, in, in, in giving more information to people that's, that's relevant and used in practice every day. You already brought this conversation into a full circle and that circle starts and ends with cell efficiency. It's it, that's what it always comes down to and, and how that will, will, equal the hormone production your body needs. So um, already came full circle. <laughs> well, if you think about this, I mean, you know, that you're in a male, the testicles are important for the Leydig cells and the testicles are important in producing um, uh, testosterone. Well, in those cells, that first step, the first step of of the rate limiting step to make uh, an androgen or a, a steroid is cholesterol being converted to pregnenolone. And that happens in the mitochondria. 
Well, we're all about mitochondrial health. And imagine this, imagine if you have, you got an older 45 year old male who is having some cognition issues. He's losing his step in activity where he's just not able to, he just feels tired during the day and he's just not that executive he was or that, that person uh, who works, um, you know, the, the bus driver for taking the kids to school every day at three in the afternoon, he's wiped out and he's had it, or, you know, it doesn't matter what the job is. It's just that male gets to that point of like, wow, you know, is this real? And I see all these commercials about male testosterone and I've got low testosterone and this and this, and, and there's a lot of controversy with that, but let me start by saying, well, doesn't it make more sense when we know so many things are happening? We know over time, as you get older, we have lower growth hormone production. We have lower NAD availability. We have more mitochondrial dysfunction. Uh, we, we have a change in antioxidant and uh, redox production of in the cell and around the mitochondria. So just with those little facts that we know happens with age and we know sets everyone up for disease, well, what if you could change that? What if you could change that and make that more efficient? Well, we can, and that's what we do by working on those factors endogenously where you produce them. We don't introduce anything exogenous that you don't make, it's, it's cell signaling with certain peptides, like your GHRHs, your GH, GHRHs and your GHRPs and other things that can in, even enhance those GHRHs and GHRPs because they are what are going to assist in making those changes in metabolic flexibility of the cell and the cell's ability to improve that mitochondrial function, utilize energy substrates better like fatty acids as opposed to more glucose, reduce antioxidant levels, um, reduce free radicals, and start to turn that cell around like you alluded to, cellular phenotype potentially changing. And set, instead, keeping that homeostasis of the cell so it can effectively convert because because convert cholesterol to pregnenolone through steroidogenesis to testosterone and and so forth so you can see if the mitochondria is becoming inefficient it isn't going to do that as well and there are other aspects about androgen receptors on cells and how those androgen receptors can be affected by inflammation so so there's a there's a lot that happens there that when you you find that you see a lot of these patients and you do their testosterone level and they're right in the mid level but they're like it's got to be my testosterone doc and you're like let's just start here let's 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 talk about this story before we jump into that because you may be very satisfied where where we go because i'm going to convince you i can improve those those symptoms with without giving you an exogenous hormone now, I'm not saying that's a case for everyone. And that's where you, you that's where this will be a great discussion here later down the road with Uzi and Erica and Suzanne and Betsy and the team um, who, who have, uh, you know, all that tremendous expertise. But I'm going to tell you, it is a wonderful place to start because you can change a lot of those people for before you even get there. And and that's that's significant, but it makes sense. You're improving efficiency. You're improving all the. You're improving all those functions of the cell, and all of a sudden, what have you done? Um, cognition's improved. Uh, exercise. Uh, uh, the ability to want to um, to to uh, our libido's improved. Um, um, enhancement with activity and even even skeletal muscle and building for males and and the same thing goes for females if they're if if uh, you you'll see changes with improvements in periods and in cycles and not less irregular periods and you'll see um, you can 
there's all kinds of those those changes that happen on both sides of male and female. And that's just the beginning. So you've got lots of places to start while you still have an amazing armamentarium of being able to work with those hormones also um, the, and more in the bioidentical side. And so again, I'm gonna set the premise, I believe for some incredible discussion and something that everybody can walk away with and go, well, this makes sense and this makes sense. And it, 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 and I'm given, I'm given information where these people are doing this every day with people. And I, I think that'll be, I think it'll be really, really relevant in, in where, how we continue to build those discussions on our discussion boards. Cause we've kind of kept that out a little bit because we've been waiting for this. And, you know, we had to start from the beginning and start with cell redox and all of these things to get everybody kind of on the same playing field and keep building this momentum. But now we're ready, I think, to really jump into a lot of things that uh, can, a lot more information that can be very helpful for everyone. Absolutely. Um, and on that note, you know, and something else that we're, we're helping a lot of folks, li listeners um, through, whether they're practitioners or not, is uh, making sure that they understand that, that you, you can't just go and get peptides by yourself, right? It's, it's a prescription and it has to be prescribed by someone who knows what they're doing. This is, oh my gosh, so critical. Um, and so do reach out to the SSRP, which is our network of cellular medicine doctors who have been certified and selected and trained by Dr. Seeds before looking into any hormones or even peptides if you have any of these issues that you want to improve or optimize other parts of your body and your life. Um, that said, that's all the time we have for today. It's so funny, Doc, we do this all the time. Um, <laughs> five more questions and myths to bust today. We got through one. I, mean, I don't even think we gave it full justice, but we will definitely come back to this because it is such a critical topic and we've received so many questions regarding this. So send us your questions. We're going to keep filing them into and organizing them as best we can. Email info at seeds.md. We'll be right there to take your questions either right then or we'll store them for a future date. Um, do reach out to uh, Dr. Seeds on the SSRP. You can reach the SSRP doctors at info at SSRPinstitute.org. Um, that is for the medical side. And if you have any questions, either way, we will find you the right place to go. Uh, Doc, thank you so much again for sharing, really pot, popping some, some, shedding some light on this, this hotly debated topic. Um, but yeah, we, we've, we've got to let you go today. I have a hard stop. Uh, Dr. Seeds, thank you so much. And I will see you next week. Thank you. Great to talk with you, Karen. And uh, I guess I get to see you and see where your lactate threshold will be next week. <laughs> It'll be much higher. Thanks, Doc. <laughs> okay, you bet. Bye now.